Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, today we're going to try something a little bit different. Uh, Ruby has some rusty parts that need to be de-rusted, or maybe we can evaporate the rust, if you get my meaning. So uh, we're going to try to make our own DIY rust remover today, or actually it's going to take several days to figure out even if we can do this, and so we have some testing to do. So what I have in front of me is some EDTA, citric acid, molasses, and water. So I've already got some stuff mixed up. Let me move you in close. We'll take a look at uh, what we're going to be using to mix all this together. And then, uh, then we're going to start the test. And uh, we're just going to keep trying and trying to see if we can uh, make something that works. Okay, so uh, there's been a few people trying to uh, duplicate, you know, what Evaporust and some of these other guys have been doing uh, on the cheap. And so here's my attempt at it. I, I've got a few other ideas. So a lot of guys are using EDTA, which is a good uh, base uh, chelating agent to uh, do the job. So I picked up a pound of this off eBay. Uh, it was $24. If you buy it in a larger bag, maybe five, five pound bag, it's going to be cheaper per, you know, ounce or whatever. So uh, this I'm just testing right now. We'll see how much we can actually make with this uh, one pound bag. And uh, the, you need to adjust the pH down to a more neutral. So I picked up some citric acid. You could use anything that will buffer that down because the pH is going to be fairly high once we get this mixed up. So we need to drop it with uh, some sort of citric acid or some other uh, thing to bring the, the pH down to a 7. And uh, then we have molasses. Now, a lot of guys talk about uh, molasses strips rust, you know. So I thought, well, wait a minute, what happens if I mix some of the EDTA and molasses together and uh, see what happens? So that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, I've got some pool test strips here to test the pH, and, uh, and we're just about ready to go. So let me, let's move over to the solution. We're going to talk about what I've got mixed up already and how we're going to test it. And then we're just going to kind of go forward uh, day by day and see how this thing works. Okay, what we have in front of me here is uh, two containers. I, bu I buy these all the time to mix uh, primer and stuff in uh, from Smart Final. These are cork containers and uh, they have about a quart in them. They're not uh, all the way to the top. I didn't want to uh, fill them up so much that I couldn't keep adding stuff to them. So uh, what we have here is uh, just tap water. This, I'm on a well and my well doesn't have a lot of minerals in it. So if you uh, are concerned about that, you're gonna try this yourself, probably wanna use uh, distilled water since uh, there won't, the mineral content will be uh, non-existent. So uh, I've got uh, about 32 ounces of water in each one and I've got two tablespoons of the EDTA and then um, just a little bit of citric acid up probably half a teaspoon maybe a little bit more than half a teaspoon to get it to about a seven on the pH scale and then over here we have about 30 32 ounces of water and then uh, two tablespoons of EDTA and one tablespoon of molasses and then about the same amount of citric acid to get the pH to drop. So, and then I just, uh, I've got a piece of rusty material I could keep cutting pieces off of. So you can see it right here. Um, it's not super rust, rusty, you know, it's been laying out for, you know, years, uh, just rusting in the air and the rain. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna drop these in and we're gonna let them sit for, um, I'm gonna go ahead, because I don't think this is gonna be that strong, I'm gonna go ahead and let them sit for uh, one whole day, 24 hours, and then we'll pull them out, check them out, and if we need to, we'll drop them back in, and if nothing's going on, then we're gonna start adding some more chemicals in here to see if we can increase uh, the speed and the effectiveness. So uh, I'll bring you back when 24 hours have gone by. Okay, it's been uh, 24 hours. Actually, it's been 23 and a half hours since we first dropped those rusty pieces of sheet metal in there. And we're getting good results uh, right here. So I'm gonna bring you in close. I can't tell what's going on in the one with molasses because it's so dark, but uh, I've got a tub of water here and an old toothbrush. So um, let me bring you in close. We'll take a look at them. I haven't agitated them or anything. I dropped them in and I set them aside. And that was it. So. Um, there is rust. This water started turning rusty color within an hour. So, and there was a little film that started forming on the bottom. So I'll bring you in close, take a look at it before we bring them out and uh, 
put them in some water, do a little scrubbing, and see how they did. Okay, before I take it out and start scrubbing on, you can see clearly, remember how rusted that piece was? And now only the pit areas are still rusted. So um, 24 hours, not bad for homemade brew rust remover. So uh, let's, uh, let's get them out and scrub them and see how they came out. Okay, let's get this one out. This was uh, two tablespoons of EDTA and about 32 ounces of water and a little bit of citric acid to uh, buffer it down to a seven on pH scale. Let's take that out slowly and put it in here, do a little scrubbing on it. Wow, man, that did really well. I'm, I'm impressed. There's stuff laying in the bottom of this tub here. Wow, that is great. Look at those results. I'll hold that up for you guys, look at that. And really, it's not etched or anything. I mean, that is still smooth. It's not like, you know, when you put it in muriatic acid, it, uh, you gotta bas basically babysit it, and it really eats everything, not just the rust. So that one came out really good. I'm pretty impressed. I think we may have uh, our own homebrew uh, vapor rust here. All right, let's go ahead and give the other one a try. I don't know how we can improve on that. Well, the rust is just falling off this one too. Look at that. Still got a band right there and a little at the bottom. So let's go ahead and give it a little scrub here. It doesn't appear that the molasses helped. It actually looks like it uh, slowed it down a little bit. So molasses is out. So we're going to stick with, um, I think we're going to stick with just the EDTA and uh, water and uh, do adjust the pH. But so the next thing I want to do, uh, that was 24 hours and this thing came out pretty darn clean. Okay. So what I want to do, I'm going to add another tablespoon of EDTA to this one and then uh, we'll cut another strip and we'll drop it in and we'll check it in, let's say four or five hours and see how it did. All right, so let me, uh, let me get some EDTA over here and mix that up and then we'll uh, drop another piece in. Okay, let's go ahead and get another tablespoon in here. I don't think it's gonna increase the speed at all, but we're gonna get, give it a try. I'm okay with leaving parts in overnight. That's not a big deal. We'll go ahead and get this stirred up. The less it takes, the cheaper this, this uh, home brew will cost, right? Okay, now let's check the pH. That's one thousand two. All right, we gotta let this set for 30 seconds. Okay, we've got a pH of about 10 or more, so we need to get that down to seven. So I'm gonna take, this is a quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a quarter teaspoon in at a time. We'll stir that up and keep checking until we get it down. You don't want to overshoot and make sure it's all dissolved in here really good. All right, I'm gonna keep checking the pH and I'll bring you back when I get it down to close to a seven. Okay, that quarter uh, teaspoon did the trick for a tablespoon, so it's about, uh, a tablespoon of EDTA and a quarter teaspoon of citric acid will bring that pretty close to balance. May not be perfect, but uh, so we are ready to go. Let me stir this up again. All right, I've got a new strip here. This is a little heavier rusted than the other ones were. There's a little heavier rust right here, but we're just gonna go ahead and set this in. And uh, we'll go, I don't know, four or five hours, maybe six hours. Um, and then I'll bring it back and we'll take a look at it, see uh, if it's uh, stripping any faster. We went 24 hours on the other one, so we'll just come back and check it at six hours. And then we're gonna let it go a full 24 hours to compare um, if it did just as good or worse. From what I understand, if you keep adding too much EDTA in there, it'll actually slow down the uh, cleaning action. So uh, I'll bring you back at six hours. Okay, it's been six hours, 
and I'm not really seeing uh, the kind of action I was seeing before at six hours. So maybe three tablespoons per quart is too much, but uh, we'll find out tomorrow after 24 hours. Okay, it's been 24 hours. Let's get this out. I'm not gonna rinse it with water. We'll just brush it off in here. See how it looks. Looking pretty good. Some of that heavy rust band right there it's coming off, but it uh, looks like it probably needs more time. You can see right there. Get a little closer. Let's do this side right here. Yeah, it looks good. So I don't know if the extra uh, tablespoon helped because it's really about the same. So two to three tablespoons per quart of the EDTA, looks like it works pretty good. And then of course, uh, you need to buffer it down a little bit to get the pH to drop. But that looks pretty good, guys. I'm pretty happy. I think the next step is to mix up five gallons of this stuff or whatever that one pound will do. So we'll take, uh, take a measuring uh, spoon and measure out uh, how many tablespoons we can fit into a bucket and then we'll add the appropriate, appropriate amount of water to make whatever volume. We'll, we'll go for two tablespoons per gallon in the bucket and then uh, see how it goes because I have no problem leaving a part in an extra day or two. I don't care as long as it doesn't damage the steel and that's, that's looking pretty good. So this, heavy, this was super heavy rust right here and I think uh, with a pressure washer or just leaving it in longer would do the trick. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and mix up a big old batch. Okay, I've got an extra tall uh, bucket from my chlorine taps for the pool. So this is probably seven gallons of liquid volume. We'll measure that out depending on how much of this. Uh, so for every two of these, there'll be a quart. So that'll be eight scoops per gallon. So let's just go ahead and start putting this in here and uh, we'll see how much we can make with one pound. Two. Thirty. So thirty, and I've already taken um, five out of here, five out of here, so that'd be about thirty-five tablespoons per pound. So 32 would be uh, four gallons. So let's go ahead and add four gallons of water to this. Then we're gonna go ahead and buffer it down. And I may pick up some more to fill this up more, but uh, we'll go ahead and add four gallons of water right now. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the solution I already made in. It's already made up. So that'll be a uh, little over four gallons. So let me get that measured out and I'll bring you back. And we're gonna stick a real life part in here that I need to uh, get the rust off for Ruby. So what I have here to dip is uh, the brake, um, I guess the brake bracket that holds the brake pedals. So and it hooks to the master cylinder or the booster. So uh, it's not horribly rusted, you know, but uh, it's rusted pretty good. So I want that clean. I don't want to have to sandblast it. I'd just like to clean it. I went ahead and wiped any grease or anything that was on it off. And unfortunately, our, my, our solution comes to about here. If I had enough to make five gallons or fill this bucket, it would easily submerge this whole part. But we're going to go ahead and put it in and we'll just have to flip it over once half of it's clean. Then I have, uh, I've got the brake pedals here. They're rusty. Looks like those will settle in all the way. They have a little bit of paint on them. Um, we'll see if it damages paint. It's not, it shouldn't. So we'll kind of get these to fit in here. Get that to submerge all the way somehow. There we go. And then I've got uh, the brake that holds, uh, or the bracket that holds the brake switch, uh, a nut, a little bolt, and the bolt that holds the pedals in. We'll go ahead and drop that in as well. We'll put the lid on it, <clears throat> and then we'll check it tomorrow, about 24 hours from now, and uh, see how it's doing. If it's uh, not completely rust-free, we'll just leave it another day. So uh, we're almost done with this experiment, so it looks like it's uh, working out pretty good on the cheap. So. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow about this time. Okay, it's been 24 hours. Let's take a look. This was half submerged. I 
don't know guys, I'm, we're gonna call this a success. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's, that's, uh, that looks pretty darn good for a homemade rust remover. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this one over and then uh, we'll, we'll, I'll get them all cleaned up tomorrow and then we'll take a final look at all these parts and then uh, we'll wrap this one up. Okay, it's been 24 hours, almost exactly. Let's go ahead and hit them with the pressure washer and see how they come out. Okay, that came out really nice. Super clean. So the trick to keep them from flash rusting is to blow them off with air right away. And then we're just gonna wave a propane torch over the top of it. And you can see the moisture in the air, in the uh, metal just evaporate away. A bigger torch would work faster, but this is all I had in the shop right now. Okay, that part's thoroughly dried, clean, and rust-free. Let's go in the shop, take a look at it. Okay, let's take a look at them. Came up pretty nice. It's got some staining on here, but that's not rust, so I don't care. Uh, you guys remember what it looked like before. So I'm really happy the way they all, everything came out. It's just, uh, it just looks fantastic. Pedals came out nice, really nice. Now there was some sort of black spray paint. I probably spray painted it when I was a kid. Um, and that did affect that paint. Now, I don't know if I would have hit that with the pressure washer, the paint would have come off just the same. I don't know, but uh, it did come off. It can't, seemed to kind of dissolve it a little bit. So I don't know if the solution is uh, safe for like something that's partially painted and partially rusted and you want to save the paint. Um, you probably have to do a little trial and error on that. I'm not sure. Anything I'm throwing in that bucket, I don't care about the paint. It's going to get repainted and I would, like this, I hope the rest of the paint came, would come off. So, but the petals came out nice. There is some staining right where that paint was. So there's still some residue of that paint be left behind and you can see some writing here from the factory or something. So small parts came out really good. No problem there. So Really happy. Uh, this stuff is going to work out great. And like I said, I will be adding to that bucket and try to bring it almost all the way up to the top. So when I put larger pieces in, they're in there completely submerged all at once. Okay, guys, that pretty much wraps up this uh, video or experiment, depending on how you look at it, to uh, making our own uh, rust remover, DIY evapor rust. And it, it seems to work out really good. I'm really happy with it. So uh, the one pound bag of EDTA uh, was $24 and the citric acid was seven dollars and i'll put a link in the description to both these uh, items now i did use some out of this bag before i started shooting the video doing some experimenting trying to figure it out so in theory i could you could just take the one pound bag pour it into five gallons of water buffer the ph down to seven and you're good to go so you'd be 31 dollars to make five gallons so that comes out to about a little over six dollars a gallon right so uh you can buy evapor rust and other stuff. Uh, I think a gallon of evapor rust right now is $33 or $35. So basically uh, you get five gallons for the same price as one gallon. Now, does it work exactly the same? I'm sure it doesn't. Are these the exact chemicals that are in evapor rust? I'm quite sure they're not, but they're pretty much doing the same thing and that's all that really matters. So, and it is uh, safe. Uh, this is, happens to be food grade citric acid. And this EDTA, um, not this particular one, but uh, doctors use it to uh, clean uh, toxic metals out of your bloodstream. And, and when you start looking for it, you'll see that there's a lot of supplements with EDTA in it. I think bodybuilders or some to use it. But uh, so I wouldn't drink this solution for sure, but it's not like it's toxic, you know, like muriatic acid or something like that. So it's a little bit safer to use, but uh, I'm really happy with the results and uh, I'm definitely gonna buy some more and get that bucket full all the way to the top because Ruby's got a lot of little parts that need to be uh, de-rusted or evaporated rusted. So I'm um, anxious to get those going and get them all cleaned up and uh, dried off. So uh, this looks like it was a success all in all. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint and Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Mash that bell and drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next one.